And every year on the date of the accident, it runs again as a warning to others. Plunging into the gap, shrieking like a lost soul. Percy, what are you talking about? The ghost train. Driver saw it last night. Where? asked Thomas and Toby. He didn't say. Ha! Huh, said Thomas. You're just a silly little engine. I'm not scared. Thomas didn't believe in your ghost, said Percy next morning. His driver laughed. Neither do I. It was a pretend ghost on television. Percy was disappointed. It was a pretend ghost train, but it was made using real elements. And here is a behind the scenes look at how I went about making this video. It took a bunch of different layers of different pictures and different videos to make the video that you just saw. Like if I zoom in over here, here is, oh, which one of these is it? This right here. This is the original video, no editing or anything done to it, of a three foot gauge replica of Thomas the Tank Engine at Tweetsie Railroad. And I recorded this in 2018 during Day Out with Thomas. And I recorded this video with the intent to do all sorts of silly things with it. Got the whole train going over. And the trestle made an excellent place to video where it's unobstructed by too many trees or people walking by or anything like that. So I take the video and I add masks to it, which is where a person would cut out a part of the picture. And this is the mask that I have that's cut out to the shape of Thomas. And I have it traveling across the screen with all those little keyframes at the bottom. So it moves with Thomas. So instead of just being a Thomas shaped cutout that stays still, it moves around as Thomas moves around. And I have it marked so it keeps up with Thomas as Thomas kind of speeds up part of the way through the video. Here is a look at the process of masking the tender. It's the one part of the train which I actually haven't masked yet up until this point. I zoom in. Get a more detailed look at the train. Just make an outline around the tender. Just clicking the mouse as I go around. And I recorded this video in 4K, so I can keep a pretty good amount of quality even while I'm zoomed in. Just complete the circle, adjust it a little bit, where it follows a little bit more closely. Then I go skip forward a few seconds, move it to match where the tender is, and it will move in between the two keyframes on its own. Now back to where I was, wherever I was. Where was I? And if I move around a little bit on the video editor, this is the layer with the train. And the train is its own cutout. I have its own mask. But the way I got it to be kind of a ghost look, ghost look to it, phantom train, whatever you want to call it, is I keyframed the opacity, which just makes it more see-through. So it kind of flickers in and out because each of those little dots on the screen is a different level. So if I take the opacity and make it zero, it's completely see-through, and if I make it 100, it is completely visible. As you can see, it adjusts in between to go from one level to the next level. So I don't have to do each frame by itself. That's why it's keyframe. It does all the in-between stuff for me. And the color, I adjusted just a little bit. I took down the saturation to give it a little bit more of a gray color. Just to kind of make it look a little bit more ghostly. And this right here, this is the original image that I used for the background, and partly the foreground. I cut Thomas and Annie and Clarabelle out of the picture, and I zoomed in on the picture a little bit so that it filled up the whole screen. But there's one issue, if you don't, if, since this is going on top of the picture, if you were to not do anything to it, you'd end up with an image like this, because the train that I have cut out, that is Thomas and the coaches, appears on top of the windmill that is in the foreground. And that just doesn't look right, does it? So, 
I cut the windmill out. I made a separate layer, and put it on the very top of the video, made a separate mask, and there's what it looks like. A separate mask that is just the windmill, that way I can make it look like it's in front of the train. And that's kind of a look at how it all goes about. And I would have recorded the whole process, but I noticed that screen recording slows down my computer a whole lot. And doing all of these things slows it down even more. You know, all these fancy video editing projects. And here is a look at the sound and stuff. I made a separate video file for the sound, that way if I wanted to use the same visuals again, which is kind of what I did with this one, I took an older video that I had, just cut out a few new things and re-edited a video I published a few months ago. But here I've added the Thomas narration, which I recorded off of YouTube, and here just for fun I'm going to experiment with adding a layer of effects to it, because I noticed that in the original Thomas episode, there's a lot of fog and stuff, so I thought, oh, here's a fog effect. I'm going to add a fog effect to it. But it doesn't really look good, I noticed. And part of it's just because it's a bright, sunny day on in the background that I used for Thomas. So it just it doesn't quite look good, I think. And every year, on the date of the accident, it runs again as a warning to others. Yeah. Plunging into the gap, shrieking like a lost soul. Percy, what are you talking about? But I can adjust the fog, I discovered later on. I use CyberLink PowerDirector 19 to edit all of these videos now. I used to use an older version, but I upgraded earlier this year. So if I click on one of these, I can affect how much the effect is. Let me rewind it a little bit. So there is how much fog. I don't know, you adjust some things on here and you can get more or less of an effect. Or slow it down, or something like that. But of course I didn't end up using a fog effect in the final version, just because it didn't strike me as being that visually appealing. Even though it does cover up the poor editing and parts of the mask where it doesn't quite line up. But I'd rather people be able to see the flaws in the design. But that's a behind the scenes look at how I made this video. And I'd be happy to do more of these if there was interest in it. But I thought just to do something interesting and less filler like, I'd show for once in my life a behind the scenes look at how one of these fancy effect videos is done. <laughs> 